Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we are back with another experiment for you guys and that is testing the space elevators wheeled suspension for speed. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started with this experiment because I really want to have the space elevator go a lot faster than the way it's moving currently which is quite slow. We only get about two to four meters per second on the way we currently have it at built, which is a mixture of one by one wheels and three by three wheels. One variation being this variation, two wheels on both sides hugging the pillar with another variation where it is not hugging the pillar with two, but with one. So it meets that point of it over there. So technically the pillar being three wide blocks wide was probably not the best idea for this type of build. If it was actually five wide, it would cover the wheels a lot better, but we got to work with what we have. So today I kind of want to test out what if we just did these wheels instead, can we hit a quicker speed limit, not cause much clang uh, with a similar type of elevator, which is kind of like this, but a little bare bone. So, we're going to remove a lot of these right here and we're going to build it and attach it onto the three pillars or maybe one. Well, we'll attach the three pillars, but let's just get that set up really, really quick. All right. So we got the fundamentals built. We have our wheels on each side of each pillar, one on the lower level, one on top, which I think we could add a little more going up and down as well, just to carry more weight. But there's a rudimentary build because it's a lighter build. Than the current space elevator but we still got to set this thing up to run smoothly so first things first we need to set it up so that we can see where the wheels are going here we need to look at the wheels and go forward with w on the keyboard and see which side is going the right propulsion versus the wrong propulsion so it looks like looking forward the way i'm facing I'm a character down there, down over there. Uh, we're going to say left like this, right this way, up and down, right? So if we're looking at the wheels here and we go forward, it looks like the right hand side is going the right propulsion. The back side looks like it's going the right, the perfect propulsion as well. The front is going the wrong way. And let's see what else is there. And the left hand side is also going the wrong way. So what we're going to have to do here is basically tell these specific wheels to have the inverted propulsion. So let's get that set up. All right. So of course I had to add the mod build vision so we can easily go into each individual one to make that edit. All right. So it's the front one that we need to edit. So we'll change this to inverted. We'll change this one to inverted. And we said the left hand side, which is these, which needs to be reverted as well. So we just got to do these for all of these for the front and the left hand side. And we should be good to go. All right. So I think we're all set. Let's just double check it just in case. It looks like. We missed a few <laughs> or I inverted the wrong thing. Actually, let's see <clears throat> the front two is good right here. This one's off, but that one's correct. That's correct. That's correct. 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 These are good. These are good. These are good. So only this one's off. For whatever reason, I probably missed it, if anything. So let's just get that all fixed up. And let's say we inverted this one by mistake. I probably inverted this one versus this one uh, by mistake. That's why it did that, because they overlap each other. So it's easy to kind of miss the mark on that. So let's see. Go forward. And I think we're good to go. We are perfect. So that is the propulsion the right way. Okay. So with this type of build, 
which is similar to what we already have, we're going to have it basically hug the pillar and go up. And the only thing that's touching these pillars will be the wheels. So that should and hopefully will prevent it um, from going too slow uh, and also not break stuff. But we're going to have to see how that goes um, shortly. Let's put some connectors on here so we can lock in to the base of the elevator itself. So we're going to put a line right here and a line right here. We'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Okay, we have a connector bottoms. We have our wheels. We need to disconnect off of this thing. And of course, once again, this is a much, much lighter build than what we currently have in a series. But let's see if we can actually pick up speed with this build. So, of course, we're going to disconnect off to the wall, which is right here. And it should be a free block on its own with no issues. So we do need to change up the wheels a bit here. So we got to go into our control panels, go to our wheels, settings. We're going to have to do pretty much the height offset. Take it off of the pillars. So that way it can, you know, have, have its freedom <laughs> in an essence. That was interesting. <laughs> we took off the connectors and it's front heavy, which is expected because it is more blocks in the front than it is anywhere else. So yeah, and I didn't squeeze the wheels together. So let's not do that again. <laughs> so here's the wheels. Uh, let's see. On our current setting, we have power at 100. Strength, we left it pretty weak. We increased the height into the point where it hugs the wall, which it could be like... I think we have it like 0.5 or 5.5 or something like that. Friction, we do 100%. Speed, we try to lower it so it's not too, too fast. And we just did 100 um, KMs per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. Propulsion and everything, we left this as is. The interesting thing that I find in this series is that when you press forward, you know, it goes up. Or the wheels go upwards. But when you start to do wheels and put in potion override that's where it gets kind of funky where each wheel is actually spinning slightly different so can't see it from, from there but if i did let's see here proportion override let's do like 0 0.001 0 0001 be nice and slow right so let's just stop that and you see if it, we want to automate it to do um proportion override we cannot invert all of them in certain ways so these were inverted so that worked fine this one was inverted but it does not work fine and the back ones here weren't inverted so that doesn't work fine so we do have to adjust it a little bit if you want to do um, propulsion override in this case so that's a learning experience in the series as well which i'm gonna have to correct so that i don't have to control our forward and downwards we just have propulsion override take over and, and do its thing all right so with this being not too heavy i'm pretty sure it's going to work okay we're going to unlock and go up Oop. we did increase our height offset which is the problem all right so let's just unlock over there and i think we fixed our height offset slightly let's see if we can just try to get this back into place i kind of it looks like i kind of messed it up a bit yeah, so it's front heavy and everything like that. The wheels are no longer kind of aligned. So I think, I think we can hug the pillar just a bit more. And let's just do, since the strength is at six, we should be fine to go a little bit on the crazier side and see if it fixes itself. No, it doesn't look, look like it's gonna fix, fix itself. Let me park that right there and see if I can squeeze it together a little bit more. Let's see. 
Okay, that fixed it somewhat slightly. Let's see if we can just drop it down. So it drops when you squeeze it in like that, of course. And I was hoping for it to really get fixed up, but it looks like it's having issues. So not much we can kind of do there. Hmm. Uh, another thing we did try is put in a gyroscope. So we put in a gyroscope, we just put it right over here. We did two in our series and then we did a control override just on default 000 and everything zero so that it just stays appropriately. But looks like it's not staying perfect still. So I gotta find a way to get this fixed. <laughs> So it's, it's squeezing a little too hard, it looks like. So we did the height offset. Let's just get back to our 50s because we're destroying the pillar, basically. <laughs> Let's reduce the speed some more and go with this for now. So unpark it and go forward. So we did that. We're going 13, 14. Oh, see some damage right there. That's what I'm trying to prevent. I, I don't want the damage to occur. So that's what we're trying to figure out. What's the best, um, I guess the best height offset would be what would solve that. Oop, that was not good. Okay. And let's take a look at how closely this thing's touching the wall. Okay. So 0.51 is an issue. 0.3 seems to be fine. Let's try that. And we're in the negatives here when we talk about this variation of it so we unpark it and go up okay so 0.3 it's losing a little bit of its grip and it's going the wrong way around which is not ideal because it's now slanting forward so i think we just gotta put it a little bit tighter so negative point maybe three two let's try that and looks like we're a little off. Ooh, don't know what happened there. All right, so let's see how this works. See if we can pick up some speed. So not all the wheels are touching. We're a little bit on a slant. And we are going... Yeah, not quick at all. <laughs> so the main reason is because not all the wheels are touching the pillar. Oh, oh it's, it's gone back to its position. Our pillar is taking some damage, but we are now going 15 miles, or 15 miles, 15 meters per second, and we're having a little bit of bounciness and it's causing somewhat of an issue. So do we want to clamp it more? <laughs> Maybe we do. Maybe we clamp it 0.35. We reduce the strength slightly and it caused that little bit of a tilt forward. So here's the problem I have, I think, in our current situation where oh, there is not enough friction or, or, or strength here to keep it up right now. So let's see if we put that back to six. Yeah, that's fine. Here, once we get through the humps or the bumps, <laughs> we should be okay. to get it on the pillars back. Okay, so we're a little bit off the pillars now. So definitely a forward heavy type of system is gonna cause issues. So I guess one way to kind of resolve that is by putting more wheels on top and putting more wheels on the bottom, which is what I kind of tried in the series as well. So if we did that, we should be able to kind of combat the issues of this so it's more balanced but for now let's just throw in a couple of batteries in the back just to balance out the, the, the weight of it and I think we put a little more than just three we have three up front but let's just throw more because we have a lot of steel plates here as well the gyroscope with the override doesn't necessarily do anything so let's not do override 
and leave it as it is. So that way we can, can kind of control it, I guess. Well, we can't really control it. <laughs> All right, so let's do that. So the back is much, much heavier. And now since we're much, much heavier, we can't get up to speed here. So I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing up and down right here because the weight of the whole thing, it's, it's terrible. And we can't do it too much. The one fix I was using in the series as well is to use the jump button on the wheels to kind of get it unstuck a little bit and keep bouncing it and then it'll fix itself and pick up the speed again. So looks like this is a bit of an issue here. So let's get rid of batteries so and see if we can kind of control this a little bit better. So now the weight issue is not much of a weight issue. But now for some reason we can't climb anymore. Okay, I think it's because we damaged a few things. So let's do that again. So negative height offset as negative 0.35. Power is fine, friction's fine. Well maybe we could reduce fr friction. Let's increase the speed a little bit and get off it. Yeah, so we're still slanting even though we're not as front heavy. It was still a little front heavy, but not by much. I mean, we have a gyroscope and two batteries over there. So let's just do the same thing. So let's put a battery here, a battery here, and a gyroscope. And that should slightly be balanced in some ways. Um, let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's still breaking the pillars because we're bouncing a bit here. So one solution and the same solution as I mentioned before is probably put more wheels. And right now it's not too bad. We're going pretty fast. 17, 18 with a little bit of bounciness and breaking some of the pillar. So well, I, re I really want to reduce that breakage of the pillars. But what can I do to stop from that from happening? Do we, we do high offset to grab the whole entire thing with the, the lesser strength, like say 1% and just hug it all the way? Would that make the difference? So that way it's always completely hugging it, but very little suspension. No, that doesn't seem to be <laughs> the right idea, but I don't think the pillar is breaking. We are bouncing without much of a pillar breaking, I think. But now we're kind of stuck. Okay, here we go. So it looks like, you know, ooh. looks like we kind of pick up some more speed, but it's a little, it's not ideal. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a little sketch. 2%. So we broke some of the pillars, so it's going to take a bit to climb over this. There we go. 2% with a height offset up to maximum neg negative to hug the pillars. And okay, this looks promising. Oh. And of course I say that and that happens. <laughs> so let's try again. Let's see 3%. Yeah, we got it. There you go. 3% with a negative 1.5 Height offset, eh, it's not too bad, but we do fall when we park it, I think. Nope, we're good. Okay, so it's got to be a combination of the strength and height offset. We've got to get it perfect. So what if we did like negative one? So negative one with three strength, it's a little wobbly, yeah, a little bit of breakage still. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit of breakage. Uh, okay, so go back to our 0.5 situation. Uh, maybe 0.7. Let's try that. 0.7, same strength, 3%. Uh, we got to fix this a bit if we can. Okay, here we go. So we're a little bit bouncy. We're at 17 meters per second. I think that's our top speed right now. And we are still wobbling around. But oh, there's a break there's some breakage on the pillar as well. So 
that's where it gets really, really tricky. I gotta find the sweet spot here. So let's try 0.5. Okay, here's 0.5. Still bouncy. Oop, we just took out a good chunk of the pillar. And I mean, for the most part, it's okay, but it's still going to take a chunk of the pillar out here and there. The good thing is that none of the wheels are broken. <laughs> That's probably the best part about this situation. But honestly, I don't think I can go very fast. If I go fast, it's going to kind of break out these um, pillars. If we don't put enough offset or strength, then it's not going to hug the wall well enough. So maybe there's no real real sweet spot but let's try take off air shock does that make a difference that's something i haven't really played around with so let's see all right we took off air shock and interesting enough we're not bouncing anymore so I think that automation of air shock where it hits hard, that's when it's bracing for impact and it's hitting the walls and breaking it. So that might be it. So what if we did, so I think my speed limit is 71 kilometers per hour. Let's change that to 100. That's where we're, we're capped at 17 meters per second. So let's increase that. Now we are at 25. There we go. So I wish I knew that earlier. So I think taking off air shock is what is doing it. So you take off air shock, no bouncing around, and look how fast we're going. We're going 25 meters per second. So I think that's the ideal sweet spot. Um, is there a sweet spot when we talk about the high offset with the strength? Let's go back to 6% and see what happens, because that's how I originally had this thing set up. I think we're good. Yep, it looks like air shock is the way to go. So turn that off if you want to make a space elevator with wheel suspensions. Oop, we hit the end of our mark here. <laughs> so yeah, that looks like it's ideal. That that looks great. And it stops and everything like that. It, and parking it, we, we, we grip onto it. We don't have no thrusters or anything like that to keep it afloat. So that's a good thing. Now coming down is the scary part. Coming down, when I dropped the whole entire space elevator previously, it was very, very scary because it, it was bouncing around, breaking the pillars so the towers could fall down. So without the air shock, maybe we could just drop it as fast as we can. Yeah, it's not too bad. We're at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 meters per second drop, 100 meters per second drop, and nothing's breaking. Can we slow down? We can slow down. And of course, we can go back up. Okay, this is perfect. This is exactly what I needed for the space elevator. So I wish I really knew this sooner instead of constantly playing around with the wheels for hours and hours on end to find the sweet spot at one point in time. So it definitely looks like it's the air shock. So air shock automatically increases the strength of suspension spring when it's about to land hard. So that's when we bounce a little bit it automated automatically says increase the strength so then boom that's what happened to the pillar so with that off that's how we're gonna make our space elevator with wheel suspensions all right so i'm very glad i did this experiment to learn a little bit more about wheel suspension and how to incorporate it into the space elevator so once again turn off air shock that's it <laughs> well combination of strength friction high offset and stuff like that too but the main point is the air shock that automatically increases strength when it's preparing to hit something hard. So that is the problem that we were experiencing. So I hope you guys did enjoy this experiment. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up, like the video, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.